Good day everyone, this is Eve at Bunnies and Rainbows and today I'm going to answer a lot of questions that I see quite commonly asked about setting up pins and um, what works and what doesn't work. So this is a six by four foot pin um, at the end of my bed in my bedroom for a small bunny, single bunny named Leo. He's about 3.9 pounds, he's a lion head and he's inside there right now in his little house. <laughs> I can see like an eyeball. Um, okay, so trial and error, I, I've learned a lot, and I'm going to share all that with you, but I wanted to make a pin that is well suited for him. Each bunny has a very different pin um, based on their personalities and if they're mega chewers or not. Um, that's a really big factor to think about what materials you're going to use for your pin um, based on safety. So we'll start with the floor. There is... Um, children's interlocking mats underneath this blanket that I got at Aldi and it's very soft and fuzzy so I just put that over for extra padding and, and softness um, you want to have if you don't already know you've got to have some kind of padding on the floor to prevent sore hawks um, in my in my experience with all of the padding even double padding and blankets they still get sore hawks um, and we don't have carpet. I'll have to show you that in another video what we do have for the bunnies in the living room when they run and play. But we do a lot um, as far as protecting their feet and I talked to the doctor, a specialist about it, and she said that's just that's just the way it is. And I think it had, the way she was talking, it sounded kind of like an evolution thing from, anyways, I, I'm not sure, but I just know that a lot of my bunnies have a tiny, tiny bit of like a sore hock. If you pull their fur away, there will be like a little pink spot. Nothing big, but um, it is important to have these mats in place, is my point. Okay, so the bed, um, you know, is it necessary? Not really, it's kinda cute, he does, <laughs> he does use it a little bit. We have other bunnies that actually lay down on them and take naps. Um, he hasn't done that yet, it's kind of new. So the reason I have these um, stuffed animals you'll see is because he is a single bunny, and I even have them in my double bunny ones. But you'll notice that the eyes are sewn okay they're not hard plastic and the reason for for that is um, all of the animals are like that I don't ever want to put anything in these play pens that are chokeable hazardous anything that's tiny and small just like when you have a you know a baby in the house up to the age of three like you're not supposed to feed them popcorn and grapes and things like that because it can get stuck in their esophagus and choke them so you have to be and if the same thing happens with bunnies everyone so um, just be really careful like these talking about safety these are great but you have to be careful when you look at these online because sometimes they come with little wooden beads um, or tiny little bells and you've got to remove those or don't buy it at all because <clears throat> again that's safety issue for choking um, so this little mat I just got lucky. I saw those at Aldi's and um, I grabbed a bunch. I have some that are shaped like teddy bears. And the reason why I put that in there is because um, they absolutely love fuzzy faux fur stuff. It's, it's, it, they lick it, they just, they love it. They love to lay on it. Now, why did I buy this cat tree house instead of the typical um, Heidi House castles? Well, he's not really a chewer. And I'm not really too concerned about him chewing this up. Um, and it also is not your typical kind of um, carpet. If you'll see, it's like this fine faux fur again. He loves it. He's inside hiding out. So um, he is, this particular bunny is an acrobat. So um, thing with cat um, tree houses is that I looked really long and hard to find this model. The reason being is that most cat um, tree houses are really tall and bunnies have fragile bones and they do make mistakes. They do fall and he falls quite a bit. Sometimes he aims for the couch and he hits it mid belly and falls back and I have to pick him up and tell him he's okay and mommy's there, you know, and, you know, kiss his boo boo, but I don't want any accidents. So I deliberately, and the other thing with cat, um, cat tree houses that I noticed is they make getting from one level to the other really 
difficult. Like for a bunny, it would be very difficult. For a cat, I'm sure it's no problem. But um, the space between one and another and the way that they don't really overlap, just, just watch for that. So I got this so that he can get up from here to here really easily. Um, so let's move on to the potty box. Um, I'm actually going to do a segment on potty boxes because there's so many to choose from, but to be honest with you, a lot of them are really problematic and there's some really great ones and some really greatly overpriced ones for what you're getting and a lot of problems with potty boxes. And I have several models here that I'm going to show you and then I'll be talking about some other ones that I saw online that I think are problematic. So this was actually suggested to me on a group and I was, I'm blown away by them. This, this is stainless steel. And the thing with this is that the smell of the pee, you know, when you're cleaning out a regular plastic potty box, it, you know, the smell can get into the pores of the plastic and it just reeks. And it, it, the only way to really clean it out is to take the whole thing, dump it all out, wipe it down, use vinegar and let it sit. And then it kind of helps to break down the deposits and stuff like that, but they do get kind of cakey with the pee. It'll leave like a caked layer that you might have to scrape out with an actual like paint scraper. So those days are gone. When I clean these, the pee and everything comes just slides right out. There's no smell, no sticking, nothing. I love it. They are more expensive, I do say, but in the, in the long run, I'm so happy I bought these. I love them. He has his own little nightlight that comes on automatically when the lights go down. And I think those are about seven or eight dollars on Amazon. But I think that's really important. And I have these with for all of my bunnies. They all have some sort of night light. Um, I do want to say something about this hay bag. It is adorable, but you know, they said online that the holes are three inches. That's why I bought it. They're not. They're not three inches at all. They're probably about two and a half or something like that, which really isn't that great. So I have to pull the hay out of the holes myself and he likes it. I'm surprised he's using it. But um, just be really careful. I looked long and hard on Amazon and they didn't have any hay bags that were more appropriate than this as far as hole size for their mouth and their, their nose to get in to actually pull the hay out. So you need to be cautious about hay bags. They also need to secure at the top like that. This one has a snap over. Some of them have Velcro and some have zippers. Make sure it closes on the top. I've heard horrific stories of, I won't say, but happening when bunnies jump inside, the bigger ones, freak out and bad things happen. So they have to close at the top. And this one has some really nice, well-made um, hooks. So I felt like it wasn't very junky and that's why, but I'm probably just gonna keep it, I don't know. The verdict isn't out on that yet. <laughs> so um, as you'll see, I have hay kind of all over, but it's thinner in the back. That's to prevent his feet from getting hurt from the pellets in there. Now, I don't use paper pellets. Why? Because when I had a rescue, some of the bunnies actually ate the pellets. And I'm on several bunny groups on Facebook, and that is actually pretty common. And some people will say, oh, my bunny's never done that. Good for you. God bless you. Carry on, whatever. But bunnies do eat the paper pellets. Um, so these are pine pellets. Um, quickly on pellets um, and wood fillers for the potty boxes please stay away from uh, wood shavings I know a lot of people use them because a uh, manufacturer overseas has placed a photograph of a bunny on it so we all think that's safe there's some kind of agency out there protecting us looking out for our best interests we assume that they have to go through some safety protocols they don't there's no such thing People can do whatever they want, and that's the truth. So the truth is that the wood shavings have sap in them, and the sap does give off a little bit of a vapor, and over time, uh, in, in the long run, it does, uh, you know, it can. I will say it can cause damage to the lungs and the liver. It's just best not to do it. So um, these are baked pine pellets. Pine is great. It's non-toxic as long as it's been baked or kiln dried. Um, I got this at the local hay and feed store here named uh, Amber Glen, and I did actually double check with the manufacturer. I called and talked to a manager and I was pretty um, strong about my questioning about them actually being baked or kiln dried. And he told me about the factory he's been to and how they do it and blah, blah, blah. So um, I feel safe and also they don't really have that much of a smell. 
So um, I would assume that if there is sap in them, they would have a lot stronger of a pine smell, but they really don't. So this is pretty safe. And I wanna also say, it's for 40 pounds, it's $9, you guys. You cannot beat that price with any other product out there. Wood shavings, the fancy paper stuff from Carefree, none of it, cozy, cozy and clean. That stuff is so expensive. It's great, don't get me wrong, um, but it also sticks to the bottoms of the feet of um, the longer haired bunnies, so um, that wouldn't really work, and so does the, um, so do the, um, the wood shavings. In my opinion, this is the best butt, but you do need to cover it up with a little bit of hay again to protect their feet, because those things are sharp. You know, everybody makes jokes about, you know, stepping on Legos, yeah. This is worse than Legos. I'm not kidding. <laughs> you want to see me scream? Watch me step on one of those. Okay, so down here we have just a couple chew toys. And again, I got this. Um, this is an alfalfa block here. Um, and I got that from Amber Glenn. And I want to say I've bought these before on Amazon and none of my bunnies would eat them. And when you buy them, you want to make sure they don't have any glues or anything else and they're sticking them together. And if they don't say how they're stuck together, pass it. Just don't buy it. Don't take a guess. It's not safe. Um, I trust the owner at Amber Glenn. I have a lot of respect for him. He knows his products. He knows the people that he's buying from. He um, He's very picky. And my bunnies love this. And that's just to help keep their teeth down and, and help them with anxiety or when they're bored or, or lonely or whatever, they do chew. So it's good to provide them with chew toys. These other two little balls here I got on Amazon. <clears throat> I'll show you that in a minute. And then that wood is actually um, kiln dried pine that my, we bought in these long sticks and my husband just cut them. And that was um, really kind of hard to find at the hardware store. We had to look really hard several times to make sure that it was actually pine and it was because they'll try to tell you oh yeah it's pine and then when you look it's like white oak that's poisonous you got to be really careful so just know what you're doing pine is okay as long as it's been kiln dried and baked so that's what those are and then this little thing here this is the green ball is a treat ball I'm sure a lot of you have seen these before you just break up treats and put them on in there he hasn't actually discovered it I just put that down there and I'll show you what I have in there in just a second <clears throat> So pellets, um, I always leave pellets in the bowl. Now there's a lot of discussion about that. You know, people say, oh, you don't need to give your animal pellets at all. Um, they can just have hay. Um, they don't need this, blah, blah, blah. Okay, so I've actually done quite a bit of reading on um, health for them. I've, I've talked to doctors and um, basically, yeah, you do need them. They are loaded with nutrients. And um, without that, you know, the thing about bunnies is that they are, um, their immune systems are not so great. They're really fragile animals. They get sick really easily, and I'm well aware of it. <clears throat> it is absolutely life-changing and heartbreaking when they pass and when they get sick. And in my opinion, you know, you do everything you can to um, prevent illness. And for me, giving them nutrients is preventing illness. And so I buy the best there is on the market. You don't ever want soy or wheat or molasses or corn in your pellets. Please check the labels. And I'm going to say right now, I have this conversation with people all the time, all around the world. They say, oh, I give mine Oxbow. It's the greatest. It's the best. I, you know, or small pet select. And I'm like, well, did you actually read the ingredients? Because small pet select does have one bag of pellets that is free from that junk filler stuff and good for you if you found it, but it doesn't have as many nutrients as the one I'm gonna show you right here. And this one's actually made by a doctor <clears throat> who is well-educated and I trust. Um, and it's only like $3 more. So um, I'd rather just for $3 more, give my babies a better quality. This is the best one I can find that I've ever seen on the market. So I'll show that to you in a second. Okay, this stuffed animal real quickly is like super fuzzy. He loves that. And a lot of you have seen these snuggly beds. Um, he won't use it. It's really nice. It's good quality. The pillows on it are really fluffy. Um, he just, well, I've moved it around. He won't use it, but he does lean up against it as a pillow and sleep kind of on it like that. So I'm just gonna leave it in there. Um, we have this pillow in another pen. The other bunny also does not put himself in the middle. 
but then again they'll go and lay in between bowls or other things like that it's kind of strange but you know they they are independent thinkers they do what they want now this tunnel I highly recommend so if you just go to Amazon and type in cat tunnel it'll come up I think I paid like I, I don't know maybe nine or ten or eleven dollars for it it wasn't expensive but the reason why I love this tunnel you guys is that the edges have this like furry stuff on it and let me tell you all of my bunnies have destroyed every tunnel I have ever given them that does not have that reinforcement they're not even chewing on this and it was just an idea that popped in my mind I was like well I know they love furry stuff they're not gonna mess with it so I'll just give it a try what you can't hurt they love it I have these in several of my pens nobody's chewed anything so that's kind of a miracle so, you know, sometimes it's just trial and error in, you know, <clears throat> looking to see what works, what doesn't work. You throw something away, it gets destroyed, you move on. And that's, you know, part of why people say bunnies are expensive because, you know, they can chew and destroy stuff. So, um, okay, let's let's talk about the food. So this is the, the brand that I use, Sherwood Pet Health. They sell in several locations right now, but we go direct, <clears throat> excuse me, and the one that I use is, because um, they have a couple different ones. This is, where does it say it? See, gluten grain free, soy free. Um, I'm trying to find. Well, maybe this isn't the one. Usually we get the one that's called, I think it's free range. And I think it's like lower in calories or something like that. But I will tell you, none of my rabbits are overweight. So that whole thing about, oh, you have to feed them a quarter of a cup twice a day. Um, okay, you know, none of my rabbits have ever been overweight. They're all doing pretty good like that. So I'm not going to worry about it. And I'd rather have them well fed than hungry and anxious and angry. Because that's a real thing with rabbits. They will grab hold of these pins and shake them up and down and get crazy and start chewing stuff when they're hungry and yeah they always have hay but I'm telling you they want food they want pellets they want salad um, mine get organic salads every day with veggies that are safe for bunnies and I'm, again I'm just trying to boost their nutrients and I've done a lot of reading on what's safe and what's not safe and what to limit and what not to limit so I'm pretty good there and then I just got these um, little chew bowls on um, Amazon. You can find that kind of stuff all over the place. Timu, Shen, um, Etsy. Again, just make, make sure that the ingredients and everything that's, that, you know, you want to look for stuff that lists what they're made of. Don't just buy it because it's for bunnies. You have to be, you know, <clears throat> careful with your decision making. So what's in this little um, treat ball? I'll show you real quick. So there are some things that Oxbow makes that I actually really appreciate. This is the baked um, apple and banana. Um, again, I always check the ingredients. So um, they do have a couple that I don't like because of the ingredients that I won't buy. I'll be honest. This is Hawthorne Berry. Hawthorne Berry is a vasodilator, bronchial dilator. Um, it's really good for the heart. They go insane. So. These are seedless, but I will say um, that sometimes they have seeds stuck in them quite a bit. And so when I pull these out of the bag, I first make sure they're flexible and not hard. And I also look really closely for seeds because all seeds have cyanide in them. Um, don't let that freak you out. <clears throat> it's just something to be um, mindful about. It is, it is toxic, so you want to pull seeds out of everything. Um, that you give your bunny and I'll use my fingernail if I think there's a divot I'll shove my fingernail in it to see if it's really a divot or if it's a seed because sometimes you can't tell So just use safety on that. I just rip that up into pieces and I broke the apple Banana treats up into pieces and I'm using this. Um, this is from Costco. This is organic sprouted oats um, And I, I sprinkled a little bit in there and they say to use oats if you need your bunny to uh, gain weight but um, I use it I use I, I use I sprinkle basically for when I put the bunnies back in their pens so that they're not sad they have something to look forward to they're not angry at me for putting them back 
um, and it works. And um, again, nobody's overweight, so we're doing really well with that. And there are some nutrients in that, actually. There's some vitamins that are really good. So um, real quickly about cleaning, I want to just say these get hairy. Everything in here gets really hairy. I have uh, <clears throat> this HEPA filter here for me and for the bun. Um, I have asthma, and um, but the hair gets on everything. So the best thing to do is to take your hand, I mean, unless they're really gross, you just, you know, but the first thing you would do anyways, even if you're gonna throw them in the wash, is take your hands into the faucet and get them wet. Pick up these toys, these um, stuffed toys, and just wipe them down with your hands and the hair will roll right off. This just sticks to the water on your hands. And then I take my hands, rub them together over a trash can, the hair rolls into little balls and it just drops into the trash. And it, it's real easy to clean these. Same thing with the blanket, you can do a quick cleaning like that. Um, comes right off on your hands. Um, as far as cleaning around the pen, <clears throat> don't use anything with bleach or Windex or Lysol or uh, Febreze. Oh my God, so bad for your bunny. You could actually cause them some great harm um, with their lungs. Um, don't have any plug-ins um, for air fresheners or anything like that. Don't vape around them. They have very delicate lungs, and yeah, they do get really sick from that. I've also seen some pretty terrible stories about that, so please don't. Just use water in a bowl with a little bit of vinegar and a rag. Now, I have, I don't know if you saw, but I have a lot of um, essential oils, and if you want to use essential oils for cleaning around your bunny area, that's fine, but you need to look it up and make sure it's not poisonous. What is poisonous that I know for sure is tea tree oil. That's an absolute no-no around any animal, any time. Also, eucalyptus is a big no-no for bunnies. <clears throat> um, so what do I do is just a few drops of peppermint. Keep it light, keep the vinegar light, don't overdo it. You can do lavender. Um, again, just a few drops. It's real pleasant, it's calming, soothing, keeps the air clean. It makes a really nice vibe for the area, and um, that's about it. Okay, well, I'd love to see everyone else's setups, um, big or small. People are so wonderfully creative and brings a great smile to my face when I see people who truly love <laughs> their babies. Um, he's so cute. He's black, so it's hard to see what he's doing, but he's got his little face and paws. I just love him. Um, but I just love to see how much effort and love people put into their areas for their bunnies. One thing I see a lot of that I would rather not see um, is lights. People will drape lights. I mean, some bunnies are really good. They don't try to get into anything. Um, but safety first. I mean, why tempt it? You know, it's like your bunny never ever gets into anything or choose anything until the one day they do, right? And then, is it really worth it? Because they can get slightly electrocuted depending on how large the cord is and how much electricity is running through the cord, um, you know, as to how dangerous it really is. But, um, yeah, so I just uh, keep cords out of the way. Um, don't Because they can actually pick these up and move these pins and get to cords. Just keep that in mind. So um, when you have your hoppy space ready, for them, you know, living room or another room or maybe their free roam. Um, <clears throat> just always, always keep your cords inside of cord protectors that you can buy on Amazon. They have them hard and soft. The hard ones are fantastic if you want to run them across the baseboard. And, um, oh my God, he is showing off for you. How cute is he? Oh, he steals my heart. <laughs> um, anyways. Yeah, I have I have some of those posted in my um, in my photos area in my Facebook page under Bunnies and Rainbows, if you want to take a look at those, and they can help you really keep all your cords together in one place along a baseboard in a very hard plastic casing, and it looks classy, nothing sticking out, um, and I highly recommend those. Oh my baby. Okay, I'm gonna let Leo take a nappy nap on his new little rug. I told you he likes to use his stuff as pillows. Uh, so I'm wishing you all a very happy day and thank you so much for coming by. I know that was a lot of information, but I wanted to be sure to be um, thorough for everybody because there's always a lot to cover. Have a great day, y'all.